YouTube, in this video I'm going to discuss the properties of discrete probability distributions, okay? Let's recall that a probability distribution <clears throat> is no more than a, than a table we usually organize it in, but that recognizes all possible outcomes for a given experiment. So all possible outcomes, if I can write it here. And then uh, down in the second row here, we write the likelihoods or the probabilities uh, of the outcomes. Okay, so how likely it is that each thing is going to happen. The thing here is this, when we express things in this fashion where x is our variable, the thing that we're measuring, you know, it's all the possible things that can happen, and the probabilities are down here, the thing is, this is indeed a probability. So let's go back and say, what are some things we know about probabilities? Well, probabilities, we say, first of all, are numbers between 0 and 1. So one property I want to recognize is up here on the left. We say, it's actually the second of the two properties, it says the property sorry, the probability of each event in the sample space must be between or equal to 0 and 1. That is, the probabilities between 0 and 1 or equal to them. So basically what this means is for all the probabilities that we list down here, uh, we would never list anything that was like bigger than 100%, you know, for instance. So like if I had 1.50, that would be ridiculous because that would be like 150%. Or if I were to say list a, a negative uh, 0.25, you know, 0.25 of course is 25%, but to say negative 25% wouldn't be reasonable, okay? So all probabilities that we list in probability distributions have to be between 0 and 1, so that's just kind of a, <clears throat> kind of a gimme. The other property is this, it says the sum of the probabilities of all the events in the sample space must equal 1. That is, if we were to add up all the probabilities in this distribution, they should come out to be 1. So if we add up this last row down here, all of our probabilities, we should get one. So for instance, if we were to look at an experiment where we were rolling a die, of course a die has six sides, and uh, it doesn't have the numbers one through six on it, but we're gonna kind of interpret it as having numbers one through six on it, even though it has dots on it, you know, let's just mix them up here, whoops. Put a five, and how about a six here? I don't even know if it really goes like this, but if we were to make a probability distribution in which X represented the, the value of the die. So this is the uh, value of the die, how many or what are all the possible ways this die can land? And so we've got one. One way to do is get a one, or a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, or a six. Uh, but essentially what we're saying here is, well then, all the probabilities of each event would be down here. So the probability that I roll a one is a one and six. The probability I roll a two is a one and six. As a matter of fact, this is uniform. We have a one and six all the way across the board. But the point I'm trying to draw upon here is this. If these are all the possibilities, you know, I've got a, a one and six chance of rolling a one or a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a 2, 1 in 6 of a 3, 1 in 6 of a 4, 1 in 6 of a 5, and 1 in 6 of a 6. If we were to add all these up, that is, if I put over here the sum of my probabilities, then what I get is this in this instance. I get 6, 6, or 1, or 1.00, or 100% of my stuff. And the reason why is because it was 100% of the stuff in the sample space. So essentially what this first property says is this. If you were to add up all the likelihoods of everything that could happen, you should have counted up every single thing in the sample space, and therefore, 100% of your stuff. So here's what I want to do, just as a brief exercise. I say, which of the following represent a probability distribution? Distribution. <clears throat> and I say, if it's not a probability distribution, tell why. Okay. So for instance, these are just hypothetical probability distributions that I put together. I say, well, x... You know, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, say. We say here are the probabilities, 3 and 11, 5 and 11, 2 and 11, 2 and 11, and negative 1 and 11. So first thing I want to recognize is this. We got a negative probability. And so this is bad, okay? And the reason why it's bad is because it doesn't abide by the second property here that says, well, all probabilities are either between 0 and 1 or including 0 and 1, but they can't be negative and they can't be greater than 100%. So this is not, and the reason why is because of a negative probability. Now, I want to dissuade you uh, from also adding these up. Actually, we can add them all up. They're supposed to add up to 1. You notice we get 3 11s plus 5 11s. That'd be 8 11s. Plus 2 more is 10 11s. Plus 2 more is 12 11s. But if I add it to this negative 1, I get 11 11. So one thing I do want to mention is this. If you sum them, they do actually add up to 100% of the stuff, but it's disqualified. And the reason why is because of this negative probability right here. So moving on to letter B, we say, okay, well, what if these you know, uh, we're probabilities. So we've got 41%, 39%, 10%, 6%, 4%. It looks to me like we don't have any negative values. Don't seem to have any negative values. We don't have any values over 100% either. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sum these all up. That is, if I add the 41% plus the 39% plus the 10% plus the 6% plus 0.04, you'll notice that we get 1. That is, if we were to sum all these probabilities, 
we added them up to the entire sample space. So yes, this would represent a probability distribution because it does abide by the two properties up top. So these last two I'll do a little bit quicker. We say, is this one a probability distribution? Uh, you know what, don't get worried about this zero right here. It is possible that you know the five in this probability distribution will never happen. It's a zero and eight chance. But the bottom line is this, uh, everything here is positive. Uh, it's not over 100%. None of these are negative. And so we say, uh, one eighth plus five eighths is six eighths, plus another one eighth is seven eighths, plus another one eighth is eight eighths, plus zero eighths is still eight eighths. So yes, this is a probability distribution. And this last one here, just go and recognize that this one's bad. And the reason why is because this says 111%. So I'm not even going to go ahead and add all these up. I'm just going to say because this one uh, was an invalid probability, then this whole thing doesn't represent a probability distribution. So that's how you can recognize if something is or is not a probability distribution. And also, those are the two properties that are associated with each distribution that we create. Cheers.